<sighs> What's up, everybody? And welcome to my Monday Night Raw review tonight from the UK London O2 Arena. Even I believe this is a tape show, so expect a lot of audio levels to be down and stuff. Um, big show tonight. Um, kicking it off with Dean Ambrose since uh, Kurt Angle is not here tonight. And he talked to him through over the phone. He will be the general manager tonight. He will be taking over since Kurt Angle named him that. And he pretty much said, you know, we got a detailed plan action. You know, detailed plan for an action pack raw, even though like he just kind of made this stuff as he goes coming down the ring for some reason. Like, what plan? We just made the general manager. So what is this plan, you know, you have? You just got here. And since he said he's taking over the show tonight, there's going to be a lot going on. He's the GM. And since Ambrose was out here, um, Miz and Maurice came out and he talked to Stephanie. Miz talked to Steph and pretty much said that, you know, you talk about your um, detailed plan and stuff for Raw. Stephanie says if you control it, Raw, this will be the last episode of Raw. So now tonight, he, she, he will be the co-general manager since she made him the co-general manager now. Which didn't make a lot of sense because this looks like we're making this stuff as we go and we're putting, you know, Dean, I would say lunatic fringe. I'm going to start calling the comedian now Ambrose since he has to be uh, wacky every week on TV. He's wacky Dean, folks, and he's going to do something real funny. Until Braun Strowman came out with a uh, cast on his arm and he took out Roman Reigns and Payback, even though they like, tried to edit the uh, cheers for him and tried to boom his fans that yes chance and thank you Strowman. He pretty much told Ambrose to me, I don't care, you know, so you tell him what to do. And tell Angle or Stephanie, you know, he's going in Roman Reigns. And then after that, he wants to face Brock Lesnar, which, like, then again, it's almost like last week. It's like they, they say one thing about Brock Lesnar, then it disappears from their minds. That was the last same thing with Finn and uh, Seth last week. And I said this before. They talk about they want the Universal Championship. But then as soon as Ambrose and Miz came out, they said, hey, fuck the, fuck the Universal Championship. Now I want to just shot the IC. Now you just want to shot the the Universal. Now you want to shot the IC now for some reason. Even though this is the only main title we really have on this show, since there is no world champion on this show, and Brock will not be back until the whole Great Balls of Fire. God, that's a horrible name. Pay per view and stuff. So <laughs> it's kind of uh, that this show once again has no world champion like they did before. Um, after that, Braun Strowman. He said he wanted that until Kalisto came out, which barely got a reaction. And he says, you may not be done with Reigns, but he says he's not done with him. He says, I beat you in that dumpster match and proved that he's not garbage. He's not garbage. It's kind of funny to say he that. It's funny how he says it. He says, I'm not garbage. Okay? You know, you could have been in my career and stuff, but I beat you on a technicality. And he says he's going to beat him tonight. And, and Amber and pretty much um, Strowman said, I beat you, little man. And I could beat you once my arm is healing. And I could do it with one arm. Until Amber said, you know what, here you go. Strowman versus Kalisto. You got one, you say you could be with one arm and Strowman, I, 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 you heard me, I, I'm injured. But you just say you could beat him one arm behind, one arm. So let's see if you can do it. And Strowman pretty much left pissed as he had to stare down Ambrose and Miss congratulated him. So you know, you're going to end the career of Kalisto tonight in just minutes, you're done. He says, you know, you got a match right now. You're going against Finn Balor. Um, so I was brush Strowman. I'm kind of hesitated out there a little. I hesitated, but, you know, kind of thought about why would you face him. Think just going in with one arm, but, yeah, I guess he's just going to go in and go in. Finn Balor went against the Miz then. The match went on until, um... Balor did kick him out of the ring, and we didn't kick him out of the ring, but Miz pretty much shoved Balor into the referee, knocking Maurice off the apron, and Miz pretty much got out and said, you know what, as the guard and the general manager, you can't put your hands on a referee, disqualification, I win the match, and now I am still the number one contender for the IC title, until Ambrose said, you know what, um, you're going to do this match right now, restart the match, banning Maurice from the ringside. Fair pretty much brought him back in there, did the um, sling blade, you know, with the running kick, and coup de gras, win the match, boom. 
Alexa Bliss was in the back. Um, pretty much getting ready for a match until Nia Jax. And so you remember everything you said last week, right? So after this whole Bailey thing, I get the title shot. But Bliss says, you know, Kurt Angle makes the matches, not me. Well, it looks like you just got yourself a new best friend for right now until uh, I get my match. So, yeah. Uh, Alexa Bliss came out. She went into Mickey James. As Mickey James brought Bailey with her as backup. Um, pretty much um, an okay match. I'll give it that. People were singing the Bailey song, of course, the UK, and even sung a little bit of Mickey James, but mostly the Bailey song. Hey, Bailey. Who? No, uh, let me just try that again. Hey, Bailey. Who? Ah, I wanna know if you be my girl. But uh, pretty much after the match, Alexa tried to beat up Mickey James, which she pretty much um punched her on the top of the rope and won. It was kind of a weird finish in my opinion after barely did a crossbody on Nia Jax and the outside of the ring, just one with a punch off the top rope. And then she tried to beat up Mickey James until Bailey chased her backstage and then Nia Jax pretty much splashed into Mickey James and hit a running elbow on her and left. Uh, Ambrose pretty much was talking to people in the back saying, hey, you know, uh, it's going to be a let's talk more action, okay? Because Miz TV was going to happen with some One Direction member and it's canceled. And Miz pretty much, he made a match, so he said, you're going to go against Wyatt tonight. Didn't play Wyatt. So, yeah. Pretty much going to match M M Mickey James. Let me say this about Mickey James real quick. Um, I don't know what the, you know, I thought she would I know, it's, I know it's a tape show, and I know it's going to be a lot of edits, because I thought about lot of edits tonight out here, and this, see that, the crowd was really weak, and I'm going to end the crowd for a minute, because they were very, I know the UK crowd gets a little bit crazy, but they were a little bit weak tonight, not as hot as they are when it comes to the night after WrestleMania type of um, hot, but a little bit weak tonight um, than usual, because usually the um, UK is a little more louder, they had their burst, but nothing like, you know, out of the ordinary and everything. And Nikki James, uh, I you know, ever since she came back, it's been a very lackluster return. Like, she she gets no reaction when she comes. I hate saying that because she's a legend because it's like she gets no reaction when she comes out. All right, I don't know why they put Nikki James on Raw. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me because that's one move I just didn't understand. Just, just a very odd decision. It's just she gets no reactions like Raw and SmackDown. Nobody didn't that lady and she knows who she is. That's, you know, it's kind of it really sucks because she's really that great. But it really sucks though. Um, Charlie Caruso was talking to some old Joe in the back. Uh, Joe said, "I let Seth Rollins live on his own terms. He was coming after until Seth Rollins attacked him. Then, as referees and agents that broke him up." Braun Strowman went against Kalisto, which he set his arm in a sling, cast, whatever. And as he started beating up Kalisto and kicking the crap out of him, Roman Reigns. Music played, and as people booed the living crap out of him, of course. Since this match didn't go nowhere after that, um, pretty much Reigns pretty much kept kicking Strowman's injured um, arm and hitting him with Superman punches. And as he knocked him outside of the ring, he was going to go for another one outside of the ring after the Superman punch thing. But Strowman big booted him. And he died. Um, Strowman going to a ring post. And since his sling was off, Roman kept beating his arm several times. And he got a chair and kept beating the crap out of Braun Strowman to his arm. And just Strowman walked off then. And, you know, after that, as Roman Reigns stood tall. Which I guess Roman Reigns had to do his payback after payback after he ain't even know, you know, um... Ambulance thing and him getting beat down and payback and tried to go after a uh, at the you know the whole ambulance running the truck thing. But I think it was a way to write off Strowman because Strowman will be gone for me, he'll be gone for about four to eight weeks, really. Uh, he's gonna be gone for a minute because he has to have elbow surgery and he'll be sidelined for the next four to eight weeks. You know, it's funny that they say uh, it's, a it's a torn world today because this is a real torn world today because he'll be out for nearly for the rest of the year, but since. 
He's not elbow surgery. He must have ran. Well, they say he was doing a lot of matches with um Strowman throughout the past few days. You know, here in the UK, they're on tour and stuff. So they've been doing a lot of brawls and stuff. I love when he um crash into that um crash into the uh ambulance store and went out and box and get being get be, get being beaten by Reigns with the door. I think I would have heard him, but he'll be gone for four to eight weeks, most likely until Extreme Rules pops around. Golden Truth were getting ready for their tag uh, match in the tag turmoil, which it was um, Sheamus and Cesaro versus Enzo and Cass versus the club versus Slade and Rhino versus the Golden Truth to determine the number one contenders against the Hardys. And you know, I guess you're going to add another thing for the Hardys, you know, in the UK. And I know somebody said this night fan should be happy to see Jeff Hardy tonight because you got to remember, Jeff Hardy has had legal issues in the past. And you know, when TNA used to always go into the UK shows, there was always some type of plan to write Jeff Hardy out the show, like to get him out, like at least an injury angle or somebody took him out. Because, you know, Jeff had a lot of problems back then, you know, with drugs and stuff, and I guess he couldn't leave the country. And throughout the many years, while he was in um, Impact, they had to, you know, do something so he would still be there. Like, you know, they just had to make, you know, write him out the show. He couldn't show up for the UK shows and TNA. He just, they just have to, you know, write them off of it and stuff. They couldn't be, <laughs> they couldn't be there in a TNA at the time. But I guess the whole thing is passed now, and I guess he can go into um, any country he likes now since the whole um, legal issues are over now. So I guess the uh, time is right, and I think it finally ended. Um, Sheamus and Cesaro were able to take out Enzo and Cass. Enzo with a sharpshooter. Um, after that, they took out Slater and Rhino. Bro kicked the Slater. The club was next. <clears throat> We're about to do their finisher. And Jill, um, Shane's already, well, was Shane's with a bro kick. Golden True came in. Wish they were the fresh team. I thought they were good and get the win, but they couldn't get the win. And they pretty much won with a, um, a roll up on Truth. Yeah, you know, to get the win. Since and yeah, I know this was designed. And I had a debate with this on somebody on Twitter tonight. That, you know, a lot of tag teams were buried tonight, even though a lot of them were already buried than they usually are, and they really have no momentum behind them. Because it's like, what was the point of this match if we knew Sheamus and Cesaro were going to win? Going to win? Does it make them look strong and stuff? Yes, yeah, very strong. They, they were made to look strong in this match. But should it be expensive every run the tag division? Because even to say it's only two top tag teams right now, the Hardys and Sheamus and Cesaro now, since, you know, they were being booked into this thing. Because we know a lot of these other tags that have no momentum. We're calling true. What have they done, really? And so in cast, just repeatedly lose matches and that what they used to be. Club has been buried so many times, I can't even name all of them. Slater and Rhino just got there. But they haven't really done nothing, even now that they also tag title on SmackDown. So a lot of these tag teams have no momentum to them or they've been buried already. So it's like we, some people thought this match was pointless. I know it had to kill a lot of TV time, almost 30 minutes of it, so... It's understandable, and you know, to make sure it's all look strong, but it, it does kind of kill the rest of the tag division since they were all beaten by one team. They were beaten by one team. You know, pretty much that the Hardys came out, they did their lead thing, and um, and Shane Cesaro pretty much backed out of the ring in. Seth Rollins went against Samoa Joe, which was probably gave this match away, uh, away on TV for free. A very long match, too, that was almost like a pay per view match. Not even the main event. It went off on me. And a really good match, too. Let's say that. A really good match, too. You know, I don't feel like the crowd got into it enough, but a really good match. And then a DQ with Joe Ram and Ron just going to turn back, buckle after the ref told him not to do it. And pretty much from the Kakeen Clutch, and he says, I told you. I'll say this when it's over. As he choked out Seth Rollins in the ring. So I'm surprised it was given away on TV. This is like a pay per view quality match. And it could have been safe for really extreme rules, but. You know, both guys protected, and it's just by a PQ finish, but this did go on for a minute. Really good match. I'm surprised it was, you know, ended from there. TJ Perkins, which I probably can't even say TJ Perkins anymore. I just have to say TJP, TJP, since they murdered that in everyone's head tonight. Williams, Jack Gallagher, and what do you think, folks? You, since you're in your hometown, you gotta lose in your hometown all the time. That's by WWE standards. Gallagher won, and I'm sure, you know, Perkins is still not changed his music yet. Gallagher won the match with a roll-up. He attacked Gallagher after the match. All scenarios came out for the save. There's no one on commentary. 
As they kept telling him, you know, since he beat Gallagher, are you going to give him that title shot now? As Neville pretty much argued with Cole through there, and Aries pretty much stood in the ring as Perkins decked out of there. Sasha Banks went against Alicia Fox. Nobody cared for this match because it looks like the crowd was paying attention to something in the crowd. Nine times out of ten, beach ball, because that's the big thing. But like, I've seen a lot of beach balls in the crowd at pay-per-views, even SmackDown and Raw at some point. Unless the crowd pays no attention, they boo every time someone takes the beach ball away or they pop the beach ball. Maybe the fans start bringing up beach balls if they want to enjoy them that much. And since the crowd was pissed, so maybe it was a fight in the crowd, but... It looks like nobody did not care. I'll give Alicia Fox one thing she did a very great um, Northern Light -like suit. Like, looked great. I'll say that. Sasha pretty much won with the double knees for the win. So, I don't know what they're doing Sasha. I guess he's not going after the title no more. The lady is kind of backed out from her. Bailey and, you know, just going to focus on Bailey and um, Alexa Bliss right now until Sasha does something. But, I don't think nobody cared for this crowd. They were all distracted. I believe the beach ball because they were all pissed that it got popped. And I think they were mad about that. Dean Ambrose went against Bray Wyatt. Good match. Give it that. Miz was out there on commentary. He pretty much was by ringside and he decked um he decked Miz he decked Ambrose with the title. As Wyatt rolled him in for the pin but he kicked out and Wyatt pretty much assisted Abigail and one. By the way, next week, the Intercontinental Championship will be on the line between The Miz and Dean Ambrose. As Miz held up the, the title belt, says, the here's your winner of the match, Wyatt. And I am still the number one contender, and next week, I will be wearing this title around my waist and out of this godforsaken country. And it will be awesome. So a lot of matches tonight, um, not a lot of talking. More matches as good. Not a great show. It was an eh, okay show. It's also some good matches. I will say that. Problems here and there. You know, tag team turmoil and everything. I'm surprised Samoa Joe and Seth went on as long as it did. But like I said, we had a pay per view quality match. I'm surprised it was the main event. So, a lot more um, wrestling in the show night tonight. Not a lot of crazy comedy s skits or nothing stupid and everything. I'm sure some people will say something about that. About you know Roman, you know booed mercifully is out there to kill Strowman. You know a lot of people have really been hurt this weekend through the UK. You got Emma hurt, you got Ember Moon hurt, so it's a, it's a lot of people hurt. But um, show show is okay, whatever. I don't know why they keep saying TJP, Beach Balls or Saffron's, Saffron's or Sasha and o Alicia Fox. So man, you know, Okay, show. It's alright. Nothing really special to look at. It was meh at best. UK usually you knows how to keep the crowd interested in it. it yeah, now, you know, it's not gonna be like, you know, the Raw. No, I, don't know, I can't shit, hate on Raw last week. But then again, the ratings have been really going down for Raw. Because, like, hey, you had a good Raw last week. But, hey, you're under a two now. Because people have gone on to this bullcrap with Raw this week. And it's been so crappy that, hey, nobody's not watching anymore and stuff. So, yeah. But. Crowd was okay tonight, but I usually expect them to be louder in the UK. Kind of flat. Or maybe I was just Kevin Dunn messing with the audio levels to make it look flat and make sure he found a way to put some cheers in for Roman Reigns just because. So, yeah. But I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Check out my raw review. Comment, subscribe, live reactions from Payback. Will I go to Backlash? We'll see. But I'm out of here. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.